Normally, the device would be loaded on the aircraft the day before the shot date. If the weather was unfavorable, the test would be postponed on a day-to-day -day basis. Back at the A-Site scientific camp on Christmas Island, Livermore researchers calibrated their diagnostic instruments for each nuclear event. Their task was to measure the time history of the air fluorescence induced by the neutrons and gamma rays emitted during the earliest stage of an explosion. Data measurements were collected by three major diagnostic methods, optical detectors, electromagnetic sensors, and high-speed streaking cameras. If during a final run, a clear line of sight to the surface target point was not secured because of local cloud cover, the run would be aborted and another approach undertaken. When the bombardier was on target, the bomb was separated from the aircraft, initiating a final 30-second countdown to zero time. Timing signals were emitted from the descending drop vehicle to data collecting stations to ensure that all instruments would be operating at the precise moment of detonation. The most valuable weapon physics information is secured within the first few millionths of a second. The initial light flash is caused by the air fluorescing from the neutrons and gamma rays being emitted. This light production mechanism is known as teller light. Because of the extremely short duration of the camera exposure, in daylight, the sky appears dark. During the next few thousands of a second, the fireball expanded rapidly. This phase of the reaction was observed primarily by the EG&G organization with high-speed framing cameras. Interpretation of these data enabled scientists to calculate the yield of a nuclear event. As witnessed by an observer at the test site, when a device was triggered, a complete whiteout occurred. Personnel present wore high-density goggles to prevent eye damage. The duration of the extreme brightness would vary according to the yield of an explosion. As the bright light diminished, the nuclear cloud would begin to form. This fiery red turbulence stage was the most spectacular phase and could be observed without goggles. Experimental nuclear devices designed by the Livermore Laboratory were normally tested in the pre-sunrise light to maximize the recovery of data from diagnostic light sensors. This particular LLL device, however, was detonated in daylight which enabled motion picture cameras to observe the continuous development of a nuclear cloud. In the airdrop mode, the devices were exploded at an altitude of about 10,000 feet, about 15 to 30 miles from Christmas Island, depending on the expected yield of the nuclear device. In the first six to eight minutes, the cloud would rise vertically as a whole, after which it would stabilize and be dispersed according to the wind direction at various altitudes. 